Hello, my name is Jared Powell. I'm a, I'm a psychotherapist. I'm here with Kristen Windsor, uh, who is a consciousness consultant. Her story, in my mind, is both uh, remarkable and relatable. <laughs> so one beautiful thing I found through what I've discovered and what I've learned and what I've created here. So a little other part of, of my backstory was I went through over 10 years of being in and out of mental health care treatments. I went through every diagnosis in the book, believing that would be the path to healing. And, and it was amazing because during that journey, I'm like, oh my God, like finally someone's saying this is real. It's validated. There's a diagnosis that must mean there's help. This is awesome. This is progress. And then things just kept getting worse. <laughs> right. So relatable. So relatable. Kristen, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> yeah, me, and so, you know? <laughs> yeah, and so what I went through all that, and uh, you know, I, you know, I'm trusting the system. Like I got this, I got this. Three years into full time treatment, I was prescribed 21 pills a day, and I was completely disabled, experiencing homelessness. Everything had worsened. I mean, like everything, self harm, not being able to eat, every insomnia, all of it had just blown out of such astronomical proportions um and there was just no way to even articulate what i was going through much less be like but there's also like no help and they're like well there must be help like there's hope for everything like you got this and i'm like you don't understand and so there just wasn't help and so i literally came to a place where i said mental health is not curable this isn't something that can be cured. This is something I will be living with for the rest of my life. And that was three years ago. And now I am 100% symptom free of every single battle I've ever had, which the list is very long. I can include a little thing here with the list of how, <laughs> how big the long list is of everything that I've conquered. And so the truth is, and I believe this to the core of my being with all of my heart and with every neural pathway in my brain, I believe that every single mental health battle is capable of being completely healed, 100% eradicated, allowing the inner being of the body and brain system that is housing consciousness to be fully restored to a glory greater than it has ever, ever known before. And the core of it, I truly believe, the core of it, every single diagnosis in the mental health field, which hundreds of them are stemming from the DSM-5, which was never intended to diagnose or treat people, just FYI throwing that in there. Um, I believe that the core of all healing is made possible by healing attachment systems. And so here on my pyramid of personhood, attachment systems are the most unconscious aspect within subconscious realms. And they're actually the feature that connects the unconscious mind and body. And so what happens is when we're born, we have this blueprint. We have this like general blueprint of like, here's the general structure of being a person. Here, experience, fill in the gaps. And so we have this like general structure and that's the nature part of things. And then we're born and we're like, Where? I'm a baby and I need love to survive. And then like the love is like poured into the baby and nurture takes this course and nature and nurture collide. And there's like this dramatic collision where love sculpts us into being love literally sculpts our conscious our experiences of consciousness our neurobiological applications carrying our consciousness into being and so we develop these attachment systems and attachment systems are comprised of the most unconscious memory systems within us implicit and procedural or implicit emotional and procedural memories and so we've got all of these memory systems in us including in our brainstem which happens to modulate all of our regulatory capacities including our autonomic nervous system including the connection between our brain and our mind and our gut which is our second brain down in our the core of our body 
Um, it connects all of these different things. It regulates us from the inside. It, it allows for natural self-soothing. It allows for resilience and recovery from things. It allows for a very healthy stress response. Um, it allows for integration of brain regions, the way that the left brain is like, hi, I'm going to talk to the right brain. And then they merge and converge and connect. And the way that our forebrain, our conscious brain, our rational brain connects with the rest of our brain. Because our conscious brain, our rational brain is only 30% of our entire brain. We've got like this whole brain in our skull. And only 30% of it is the part that's like, hey, what's up? I understand rationale and logic and like, you know, I can put things into words. No, like we've got like 70% 70, 70 of the rest of our brain doesn't think like that. And then we've got our gut brain, which definitely doesn't think like that. And these um, implicit memories that are developed through attachment systems live everywhere. They don't just live in our brainstem. So all of that is just the starter. The ganglia in our arms, the ganglia outside of here, the ganglia that's over here. Like you've got many brains all throughout your body. And all of those are affected by the development of attachment systems as nature and nurture collide. And this outpour of love flows from the caregiver into this little goo goo gaga baby over the many years and develops their neurobiological applications of consciousness and what happens is it develops the baseline for from which we experience all intrapersonal and interpersonal relationships throughout our entire lifespan so the way that we naturally understand ourselves and all other people directly stems from the development of attachment systems and so if we go through life we're like oh goodness I'm fat and I'm ugly. That's coming from attachment systems. If we go through life, we're like, oh my God, I'm not safe and I feel tense and I feel easily anxious. That's coming from attachment systems. If we feel like, oh my goodness, like I feel like I'm one person here and I'm a totally different person over here. That's coming from attachment systems. If we feel like, um, oh my goodness, like I'm worthless and I'm unlovable and I'm just going to continually sell myself short because I really just don't feel like I'm worth it and I feel depressed and maybe even suicidal. That's coming from attachment systems. If we feel like we just don't have the confidence to be ourselves and we feel inadequate, like maybe we even have a speech stutter because we just don't have confidence in ourselves. Just coming from attachment systems. OCD comes from attachment systems. BPD comes from attachment systems. DID. All of these disorders are really just our neurobiological applications of consciousness screaming and begging for love so that everything inside of us can flourish as it was always intended to. Yeah, that's one thing I can definitely appreciate too is this uh, the, the curative value of really just reconnecting with, reactivating, sometimes hyperactivating uh, attachment systems needing sort of a, a healing regrowth, a corrective sort sort of reconnect, and yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of bodily um, impact when that happens when people start to experience that deep inner growth. You know, um, when, when when we're working with uh, the the thwarting of the attached drives, you know, these primal deep, so so primal, so deep drives within us. You know. Um, it, it, this is this is this is really part and parcel of um, all sorts of corrective action and neuroplastic action that can happen, you know. And so, so that's that's definitely a, another thing that I really appreciated how you connected them. It, it, what's, what's interesting is um, for all my time in the mental health field, and since and for a portion of my career, I was sort of a bystander. I went from you know a, a therapist to an attorney and back to being a therapist. Um, really, there was there was only a paltry understanding that I had of how uh, the the same systems that, that involve self-regulatory correction uh, truly connect with with uh, the the attachment systems and how how we uh, well how we heal you know I mean a lot of it, it was it was a it was a crying shame to look back and see how when I was first learning about these things I was learning about attachment a little too separately from the clinical aspects of healing. You know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had I had never heard of attachment systems through all of my years of psychology research because I researched psychology for like seven years before I ever dove into neuroscience. And when I dove into neuroscience, I still didn't hear about attachment systems. Um, and so there's really this disconnect of understanding about how everything flows and we're definitely on the verge of a breakthrough like humankind as a whole is on this verge where we are evolving into new realms of what it means to be a person and that is going to expand human consciousness and allow for all aspects of life to thrive including mental health like we're there we're, we're on the point where it is in the beginning of happening like a few hundred years from now they're gonna look back and be like oh my goodness 2020 was a turning point like if we're in 
in this time period of history in the making where we are expanding and evolving together and the way that the mind and the body connect and the way that emotions and health connect like um, i was reading a book even last night about you know some of the bodily systems and it's all of these big words and all of this science stuff and then it's like meditate and breathe deeply and think thoughts of gratitude and i'm like yes this is where we are in history this is where we are there's no separation it you feel good you you do good you feed your body good health you love your body like it, it all goes together and creates health like disease is just dis ease it's all energy we're just beings of energy we're beings of vibration like my colon is a is a vibration my belly is a vibration my respiration my respiratory system is a vibration my brain is a vibration the neural networks in my pathways there's all vibration my hands are vibrations my nose is vibration my voice is vibration. like we are just beings of vibration and so if we are experiencing a vibration of pain it doesn't matter if that's loneliness or the flu, or a broken leg, or a scary incident. It doesn't matter, it's vibration, and it gets stuck in the body, and you heal it by working with the energy flow of it. And when we can understand that on a deeper level and, and tap in, I think you mentioned the other day, just tap into some of the, the older ancient knowledge of healing. Like People knew this stuff back in the day, and then something happened, and we really just lost touch with who we are. Like We are human beings. The doing comes secondary, but we're here like, I'm a human doing, that's who I am. And our health is suffering. And then we're like, oh, well, I should probably like, um, just take a bunch of pills and keep doing the same things that I'm doing and just assume it's going to like super get better. Like, no, like we're human beings and we are feelings based creatures who think feeling is at the core of us. That's just a neuroscientific fact. Like, like even just understanding that only 30% only 30% of our brain is rational and literally every other thing in our brain and our body are based on feelings. Like we have to get in touch with who we really are as living creatures. Do you know, we're not meant to it. And like even another thing I was learning about is you can use this trick. They found that brains work better instead of having like a eight hour work day, you work 52 minutes on and then take a 17 minute break and go through that cycle and your ability for focus, concentration and high quality productivity profoundly increases. And so I tried that today and I literally have not felt so healthy in my brain and my body ever. Like I found myself just chuckling in the middle after middle of the afternoon because i just felt joy and i hadn't felt that in a while like i've i'm like i'm working i'm here to get stuff done i'm on a mission i got knowledge i got to share i gotta be important and i'm like wait a second that's not who i am that's just neurobiological programs in my brain because my attachment systems are still healing because my inner being doesn't know that she's already unconditionally worthy because that's who we are we are unconditional worth we are worthy because we exist. That's, we don't need to have another reason for our worthiness other than the fact that we exist. And when we can get down to that core of inner child liberation where the depth of our attachment systems are healed into great love, what happens is our brain and our body create, from, create love from within. And so what happens is when we have attachment systems that are hurting, the attachment systems, you can kind of picture them as like, like this, like, like cargo ship or whatever, like, like a big magnificent ship. And they've got like these, these hooks and you're like casting these lines and, and each line is like um, a hook with a magnet. And so imagine like your attachment systems are like, I'm like the super mega awesome ship. And, and there's all these lines being cast from this ship and each line has a hook and a magnet and so what happens is you've got an attachment system that says i need to be seen i need to be seen and then and then this hook is like okay i got this experience here i'm seen in this experience i'm seen when i share something on social media and then your attachment system hooks into that and then because it's hooked and stuck the magnet pulls your ship towards that and you're stuck to it and you keep posting on social media and you keep trying to feed that attachment need, and you keep posting on social media and you keep trying to fill that attachment need. And then if nothing happens, you just get more spiraled into, I'm not being seen or I'm not worth seeing, or I need to be seen more. And it's because as long as the hooks of our attachment system are going into anything outside of us, we will be lacking what we're actually seeking. 
We are only ever fulfilled when that love comes from within. We've got to take time to see ourselves. And so a little, a little fun trick that people can try is you're hanging out in your room or you're hanging out in your office, you're hanging out in your kitchen or some, some space that you frequent. Okay. You're hanging out there and you take a deep breath and you're like, I'm going to pretend outsider and observe myself with an experience. And so you walk out of your bedroom, you walk out of that space and then pretend that you've never been there before. Pretend that you've never walked in this space before. You open the door. What do you see? And so maybe you walk into your bedroom and you see decorations on the wall. And you see pictures on the wall. And you see organization in the cupboard. And you see a little messy spot on the floor. And you walk in and you're like, someone lives here. These are expressions of somebody. Those are pictures from somebody's happy moment. That's a whole wall. Someone took the time to decorate themselves. Those clothes are hung because someone took the time to, to fold their clothes because they appreciate what they have. And that's a little pile of mess and I'm sure they're going to get to it. And it just shows that they're living in this space. Like there's a beautiful person who lives here. And even little moments like that can bring so much healing to our neurobiological applications of consciousness. And we can really actually start to transform the way that we experience life and ourselves just by doing little things like that, where we shift our perspective towards love, where we have this chance to see ourselves with an experience. Yeah, definitely shifts um, away from the, the, the desensitization you know, like, I, and, I, and I really appreciate you both bringing up uh, a, the experience of taking a physical break where you just stop. And then also taking sort of using your inhibitory systems to take a, a neural break, looking at everything with new eyes. You know, I'm, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm not me, and, I'm, and, this is, and I don't have my history, and I'm experiencing this for the first time. I mean, being able to really use the dissociative capacity of humans, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the sort of, but with I, I guess that's that may be a more dramatic way of saying just the inhibitory capacity of humans to be able to to experience that that sort of newness and to be able to see things and sometimes to see ourselves setting aside our judgments, setting aside our history, and then to be able to see ourselves with with the, that sort of new, fresh outside perspective while while really being inside our skin. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's healing, and it's it's and it's like yeah, it's like taking a taking a break and, and uh, allowing the reconnect and what a thing that can do for our relationships, you know, when we're able to see those people in our lives that we get used to and acclimated to, to be able to see them with new eyes and to, to, to sometimes just see them as, as a, an outsider would, we might be able to reacquire a lot of the, the enjoyment and love and whatever it was that brought us to them. Yeah, absolutely. And with that too, the more we can have compassion for ourselves with an experience, the more we can extend that outwards. You know, when we, when we take the time to be like, whoa, like I've got like a hundred trillion networks in my brain and I've got like a million complex miracles occurring at any given moment in my body. And 95% of my self essence are parts of me that I don't even directly perceive. And everyone else has that same experience. Like everyone is their own universe. And, you know, when someone says something and it just kind of rubs you the wrong way or whatever, instead of reacting, you can take a deep breath and just be like, whoa, like those are projections from their neurobiological applications of consciousness where their consciousness is experiencing projections from data. It, it trapped inside their cells from past experience, but they don't even know that. Like, oh, yeah, and just exactly. Take time to shift the perspective. It, was, it just, it gives us more of a space to respond and to respond in love. Because if someone says something that rubs us the wrong way and we're like, uh, bro, like, uh, then all we're doing is feeding this fear-based energy with fear-based energy and there's no room for love and things just get inflamed and flared and it activates more fear inside of us. And everything in life can boil down to love or fear, you know, like all the different energetic experiences within humankind come down to one of those two energies. And if we are responding from a space of fear, we're igniting those messages in our neural network. Every moment of experience is always rewiring our brain. And um, we feed the neural pathways in theirs because then they'll get more reactive. And then we wonder why there's discord within relationships. And then you walk by each other in the hallway and there's not even words, but you can like palpably feel the resentment there. It's just because there's been this buildup of energy and it's not even real. It can all be dissolved in love because it's really just being generated from neural networks in both of our brains that are just like, please heal me. 
please love me into healing yeah. and have the power to do that. Like we're not, yeah. stuck. we're not ever stuck in living in the same brain that we are. We can experience ourselves in a 100% different capacity one year from now if we start today and choose how our neural networks are undergoing reconstructive wiring. Like one year ago, I could not create new memories. I could not, I could not experience a single meal or moment of my life without chronic trauma like the list goes on and on and on and here i am happy and thriving and healthy and i got this awesome business and i do what i love and every day is miraculous and life has never been more beautiful in my entire life why because i rewired my neural networks and i did it without any outside help with without any outside help which proves that it can be done and so as much as it can help to have someone guide if th that is not a possibility, there's still hope for people. And I want everyone to know that, you know, like if you can have someone be a healing journey guide and lead you through it, like do that. Cause it's awesome to have help. <laughs> but if you can't do that, it doesn't mean you're powerless. It doesn't mean you're hopeless. It doesn't mean you're helpless. You've got power in every single moment through the conscious directing of your energy, where you choose to place your focus is what grows inside of your brain, inside your experience and inside of your life. And so just like understanding the infinite power that we have is important. And then like another thing I wanted to say with that is, um, so within my pyramid of personhood, we've got this little like peak, this little top layer that is about 5% of our entire inner being. And this pyramid here shows, um, with the 16 aspects of personhood, it shows both our neurobiological applications and the consciousness housed within them. If you look at it with just the aspects of consciousness you have the conscious awareness up in this top part of it and then the rest of it in both the unconscious mind and body or within the subconscious realms and unconscious states are all parts of the inner experiencer and so what's actually happening is all of our experience is being directly sensed by parts of our consciousness our observational self does not directly experience life our observational self strictly lives in our prefrontal cortex in a watchtower and so imagine like there's this watchtower or like a lighthouse or some kind of like structure where you look out and you got this like light or whatever right and so you're up there in your watchtower and and you look down imagine like a, um, a lighthouse on the beach okay so there's this lighthouse on the beach and there's this super cool dude and he's like super chilling in this um, lighthouse. And he's like, oh, I got this giant flashlight. It goes all the way out across the ocean. And then you've got like this whole ocean front. And there's like hundreds of people. There's hundreds of people lining the beach. There's hundreds of people surfing and swimming. There's hundreds of people on different ships out on the front. All of those are our parts of consciousness. The people swimming, the people on the boats, the people on the beach, the, the, the dude who's working really hard to, to write a novel on the, the beach, and the, the family who's got like the mom and the dad and the kids and the dog, and there's like chaos, but it's fun on the beach. And, and the person who's like, oh my God, look, it's a dog. And all of these different things going on are being experienced by life. None of the experience is happening in our observational awareness. And so we're up here in observational awareness thinking, this is me, this is who I am. I'm going through this life experience. But that's not actually what's happening. What's happening when that's occurring is our observational self is blending with our parts of consciousness. And when that happens, we lose access to our power because we think that we are the experience. But when our observational self can be like, oh, I'm the dude in the watchtower. I'm not the person on the beach. I'm not the person on the boat. I'm not the person swimming. Oh, I get it. I'm the dude in the watchtower. Once you're up there in that lighthouse with that light, you have more ability to respond because if there's someone on the beach and this jellyfish comes up and is like, watch up, I'm going to like sting you just because that's like what I do when you're here and I can't. And this person gets stung. The person's like screaming and in pain and all of this stuff. And so if the dude in the watchtower is looking at that situation, thinking that they are that situation, they won't have an ability to respond. Can you imagine the dude up in the lighthouse? Just be like, Oh my God, I'm stung by a jellyfish. Like, no, no, you're not. 
you're not, you're not, you're not. I know you think you are, but you're not. And you're looking at it and you think that's your experience, but it's not. And so when we can understand that our observational awareness, our conscious self is the person up in the lighthouse or the person up in the watchtower, we have this ability to respond to the parts of our inner experiencer, which are who are experiencing life within our unconscious mind and body. We have this ability to harness our personal power. And when we do that, when we create space between our self as the observer and our self within the experience, experience, then we literally have the power to completely reprogram any and every aspect of our brain and body, including how we breathe, how we think, how we perceive, how memories connect with themselves, how our attachment systems integrate, how our brainwave regulates itself, how brain regions integrate with one another, how our mind and our body connect. Every single thing can be reprogrammed when we ground in the power of our observational awareness. Yeah, you know, I was, I was, I was, really thinking um i mean as as you i I have the words of like uh antonio damasio alan shore um a a lot of the the, you know i mean uh patricia ogden uh uh, peter levine all these 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 brilliant people who have been sort of feeding some of their 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 the information that they've put together and how how this and all your reading all of your research has been tied into this depth of experience so you can really passionately and confidently both be a guide and invite people to start to develop these skills to be their own guide when they don't have somebody to help them to really have that impactful and powerful experience and so i mean really i mean i I, i've got to thank you for uh just really taking the time to both discuss this with me a bit before we started share your your materials which uh, by the way guys i'm going to put them in the description uh, just there's going to be links to some of her free stuff that she can just you can just get. She's just happy to share it. She she loves people being able to use this stuff on her own on their own. And um, there you have it. I mean, one of the most advanced things we can do as humans is take that that dude in the lighthouse and help him become connected to uh, the the feelings within that give so much rich information that can be brought up when it's timely to be brought up when it's needed to, to both uh, heal on a, on an internal self-regulatory level, a relational level. Um, and really on this, this, this brighter, broader level of consciousness that is, is uh, sort of outside the realm of, of much of what we understand just yet, <laughs> you know, except for through experience. And so thank you for your time. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. You as well. It's been a blessed honor to connect. I'm sending love and light to every magical creature watching this video. It is a blessed honor to share sacred healing space on this beautiful planet Earth. Namaste, soul friends. The love and light in my consciousness. See and honor the love and light in your consciousness. My brain was like literally making a list of all the things I want to say and then they all went out the window.